how pages five and six looked at the end of part two. Now I'm going to start out uh, part three by just doing a fast forward process video. And right now you can see where I changed the color of that bird from a yellow to, I'm actually using a blue biggie marker, but uh, with the gold on the background, it looks a little green. So I kind of touch everything up and reverse it and figure out how I want it placed on the page. And then I mask it off with some score tape, double-sided score tape. Burnish the score tape down and then trim along all si four sides of the border. And then I'll be placing it down where I want it on that page. Now you see I have some of that gold speedball ink on the back of my page and I did that so it really brings out the design on of that bird on the acetate. Now I'm doing the very same thing to the right hand side of the page. There we go. Kind of touching it up. Now I'm placing it down here, but you can see where I'm using a paint writer. I filled it with folk art black metallic ink, and I'm putting a lacy border all along the edge. I really ha like how this looks, but it is acrylic paint and it is a glossy metallic paint, so I think I probably will have to wax that surface. It takes about 24 hours for this page to dry. So I'm going to mix in some copper folk art metallic to do my other side because I just want to use what I have. I'm going to continue on with the other side of this page which is over here. ready for the last part of this third page layout that I'm working on. So what I'm going to work on today are the inclusions, which are, are a little bit better to turn, but they're still kind of fluffy. I'm still working with these designs, these row smalling patterns. I think I'll look with the smaller one first. Mind, I like these. here is pretty dry and it's drying flat matte so that's okay I'm I don't have a problem with it I don't have a problem with the streaks showing through that's to be expected so now I've been thinking about how I'm going to do the black lines and I've decided that I'm going to experiment with my writer again now this writer I have put black metallic paint in and worn penny paint in but I'm going to go ahead and put some flat black paint in it
But now I'm ready to work with my horizontal inclusion. You see, I've done the entire background with that gold screen printing ink, and I'm using my black Sharpie, and then I mix it up with my Faber-Castell. I find that that gold ink does not play well with the Sharpie markers. I try one and then the other, and I won't be using them again on that gold ink. On the vertical inclusion, I draw my lacy border, lacy, L-A-C-Y, lacy border, we're using a Sharpie pen, and make note of that because you'll see something happen toward the end of this video with those beautiful gold leaf borders. And I do the same thing on the back. Really happy with how that's coming out. It makes a very intricate, organic page. Now I take um, and my marker and just outline the border of those inclusions. And then I take my black Sharpie marker and put a black border around the borders of both pages. Now I'm ready to put in uh, and paint the window on my vertical inclusion and I go back to the rose mauling and I'm going to use my acrylic craft paints again. I'm much happier, this is my second time of doing painting a rose mauling pattern on the clear acetate and I'm much happier with this. I think I have a little bit more control with my paintbrush. Now I get out my paint writer and outline the entire design with my black. I have craft paint in there now. Then I add all these little dots around the pattern, just kind of freehand, and I really like those. Set that aside to dry and decide that uh, I'm going to work with putting the horizontal inclusion, the horizontal window in. So I mask it off with score tape and place it on the back. And when you flip it over, I just put a little glossy accents there just to kind of keep that border from ripping up. And I've gotten smart now. I use my paint writer on this other side of that horizontal inclusion that has that gold screen printing ink on it. It takes a while for that to dry. It's what's taking this page so long is the dry time. Put all those little dots around the border of my window just to dress it up a little. Now by this time, my paint is dry on my vertical inclusion for the window, and so I mask it off in the same manner, trim it up, and put it down on the vertical window inclusion. And then I use the paint writer just to add a border around that window, and that just sort of masks the edge of the acetate. Now I'm going to work with putting in the words creative journey because I feel like this page has been a creative journey for me. Creative goes on one side of the layout and journey goes on the other side. I'm happy with the lettering until I use my paint writer. When I start using my paint writer, that paint is so thick that it kind of squiggles over and makes my letters look uneven. So I will be doing more of this technique with my lettering, but I do not think that this particular lettering was my best ever. But I decided to leave it and maybe as I get more energy I will go back and touch it up and make it look a little better. The N on the word journey kind of gets smeared out by that black paint writer. And it looks a little, I don't want to call it sloppy. Uh, I'm not sure what to call it. <laughs> My page is all done now, so I get out some Dorland's wax. I got this, it's a natural wax that artists use on their paintings to help preserve them. and because I have acrylic paint on here and I know that it's metallic and everything that these pages do have the potential of sticking together so I wax the entire painted areas of both pages. 
So here it is. In the long run, I'm very happy with my third page. I'm happy with how everything turned out. Got a lot of ideas. I'm really happy with my gold screen printing ink. I'll, but you'll probably see more of that in in this journal. I'll use it a lot. Pretty happy with that. I'm going to look for more of it. The next segment of this video is about 12 minutes where I discuss this page. I talk about some of the things I like about the page and some of the things I do not like about it. Also, I discuss some of the things I learned while creating this layout. If you are just not interested, you should probably end the video at this point. Hi there. It's finally, finally finished. The third page layout in my Wallpaper Altered Art Journal. I used what I call a Windows design, a Windows format. This has a horizontal inclusion and a vertical inclusion. And I have the right side of the page and the left side of the page. Now, I used to have two words down here called creative journey. My lettering is not the best on here, but it says what I wanted to say. It was a creative journey. And uh, I learned a lot on this page. I was working with acetate. I wanted to see how my paper castell markers would work on acetate and how my craft paints would work on acetate. Now I started out with a Zentangle design on this page but it was really too intricate and the colors when I started adding colors they started blending in with my black lines and it just wasn't what I wanted so I got out this book of rose modeling patterns and I started using those. Experimenting with how the paints, the, the markers work on this clear acetate and I found it very interesting that uh, when you first put it on it's really kind of nice and bright and bold but as you work with it, it, it will, if you flip it over you'll be okay, you won't smear it. But if I took this page off and flipped it back so that the ink would be facing me, I could take my hand and smear it. That ink is not permanent on clear acetate because acetate is plastic and it's not going to soak into plastic. It's different, different working on a surface of acetate than what it would be if you were working on paper. On paper, that ink will, will grab the ink and the ink will soak into it and it will dry and become permanent. It's not the same thing working on the acetate. I also found that the markers, uh, even as they're facing, uh, the ink side is facing the paper, that the markers become very scratchy. I call it scratchy. You can see scratchy marks in there. The texture changes. It's not a bad texture. It's just different. And if you look at it from a distance, you won't notice it. But if you get up and look at it close, you'll notice it right away. The other thing that I worked with on this page was my paint marker. I've never really used these paint markers before and when you buy them, you get them into like a, I think I got them at Hobby Lobby for like a package of six or something like that. I've had them for a while and I never really used them. And uh, you snip the point off and I think I might have snipped a little bit too much off of the top here because it gives me a very thick writing line. On this side I used uh, folk art copper metallic paint and I, I like what it did on the borders in there but the line the line is not a thin line it's a very thick line and this is acrylic and it's shiny and it's glossy so I know that in the long run this will become sticky so I had to I did wax my pages I waxed them with Dorland's wax and I'm hoping that that will resolve the stickiness of on the pages. I'm, I'm thinking that it, will, that it will work. But if you look at this page here, I used a Sharpie marker, a copper, sharpie, copper and uh, 
copper and gold. I guess this is the gold one. This is the copper one. And But what happened was when I waxed my page, it faded out my marker. I was not expecting that. And at first I didn't like it, but the more I look at it, the more I really kind of like it faded out like that. So I just decided to leave it. I also used, and what I'm really liking on this page, is I used this, I found this Speedball Gold Opaque Screen Printing Ink. Found it in a, a cell bin, and uh, I really like the metallic effect. I used it on the background in here, and I used it over on my horizontal inclusion. And I just really, like, I'll be, I'll be buying more. I'll be buying more of this. And if the other colors are as nice as the gold, I'll be buying other colors too. I don't know if the shininess is because it's a gold metallic or if the other colors are as nice as this gold metallic. One thing I did notice about it was when I tried to draw and I used a black Sharpie and a black Faber-Castell marker and uh, both those markers the felt tip started drying up as I was drawing on here. And I won't do that again because my Faber-Castell was new. You know, those markers cost all the way from 5 to $6 a piece. So I know there's still ink in there, and I'm hoping that some glycerin will bring those back. Uh, painting on the clear acetate, I found this was the first time I've ever painted on clear acetate. And so my paint got a little jiggly in here. But I I just left that. I really was not bothered by that. I'm not trying to be a professional artist here. I'm learning about materials and how they work on different surfaces. I'm on a creative journey. Um, this was the second one I did, and I was a lot happier with this one. I really like this flower, and I like how the black marker contrast with the design and I like the little dots that I put around there. I was really happy with this page. Flip this back over. Um, did more on this side I used the black folk art black metallic and here again I had to wax the surface. In fact I waxed all the borders. I did not do I did a little waxing not on here a little waxing of the painted designs, but I just took my hand and went in around there. I did not put wax on the clear acetate. Wendell's concept, uh, very basic concept. I tore windows out of the inclusions, just tore them with my hand. I like these three little windows here. I really debated what I was going to do with this part of the page, and I really like that solution. And then this entire page on the back here has the entire rose mauling pattern and then it just kind of peeks through and then the bird from the other side kind of peeks through and this flower kind of replaces the bare space right in there so i kind of like how that happened but it's a very simple windowing technique it's just tearing spaces out of your window and putting clear acetate in there and I was thinking about it as I got toward the end of this, that, wow, you know, you can carry that window technique to uh, other levels. Like, what if you had a half-open window? What if you had a window with a curtain? What if you had a window with a screen? What if you had a window that op would open and shut or lift open something like a gate card would? So you could do a lot of other things with the windowing concept. You could even take it to a philosophical, like, you know, the eyes are the window to the soul and that type of thing. So there are a lot of ways to take even the window concept. I feel like my page is very basic, but I also feel like it was a creative journey to explore different materials. Then the, the last thing that I like about this page is the contrast of color. I used a very dark background around the borders, a dark blue. Uh, I, I believe I used a blue metallic and then I mixed it with the copper 
or maybe it was a worn penny and it created a, a dark background and then I used this beautiful, beautiful gold screen printing ink in the center here to help bring out the, the colorful designs of the rose modeling patterns. And uh, I see that there's a lot of contrast of colors on here, dark to very colorful and bright. So I like that part of the page. And I did not ruin anything on my other my other page here, but everything here is is still fine. One thing that I did was I went back to my first page over here. <coughs> I went back to my first page over here, and I'm going to tip the book a little so that you can see it. I outlined those letters with that gold screen printing ink. And I really like how it makes those letters pop now. If you can see that. So I am I am uh, not beyond going back and working on other pages that I thought were finished if I find something that needs to be done. Now the next page that I'm going to work on is going to be this one. I was just going to paint. I was saving this page because I've already gessoed. I used clear gesso on this side and my, my opaque gesso that I mixed up on this side. And I thought, well, this is just a two-page layout. I'm just going to do a painting on this. But as I was thinking about it, no, I'm going to put my, make this my fourth page layout. And I'm going to do a secret on this page. So you'll want to stay tuned to see what I what my secret is for page four. So here it is. In the long run, I'm very happy with my third page. I'm happy with how everything turned out. Got a lot of ideas. I'm really happy with my gold screen printing ink. I'll, but you'll probably see more of that in in this journal. I'll use it a lot. Pretty happy with that. I'm going to look for more of it. <clears throat> Thank you for watching and if you've enjoyed this video please subscribe to my channel and I will see you on the next page.